The Fire Nation is embarked on a dark path. And the world might never recover. The world needs the Avatar. It needs you, Aang. The Fire Nation has destroyed everything in their path. Right. There goes the savior of the world. If the world is gonna have any chance, it's gonna need Aang. I chased down every hint of the Avatar. It's my destiny. You don't have to do this alone. You have me, Tara, and a flying ball of fur. I'm not someone who can stop the Fire Nation. I don't want the responsibility. What more do you need? <laughs> the world needs you. Remember what it is we're really fighting for. The ones we love. I'm gonna save the world with my friends. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Netflix dropped a brand new Avatar The Last Airbender trailer. There's a whole bunch of new footage and Easter eggs here, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, I'll be doing videos for the episode, so be sure to subscribe to get everything. And remember, in addition to this, Mike and Brian are also making animated Avatar The Last Airbender movies and a brand new series that we'll see in the next couple of years, too. So Avatar fans are going to be eating good for the next couple of years. There's a lot of very familiar Avatar The Last Airbender theme music that they play during this trailer, or Netflix versions of the Avatar The Last Airbender theme music. But they actually start the trailer with Monkey Yatso's voiceover talking to Aang in the past before he goes into the ice about how the world needs the Avatar. This is meant to be when the Fire Nation is attacking, but during the series they're actually going to show us the genocide of the Air Nomads way back before he went into the ice. During the original Avatar The Last Airbender episodes, they just talked about that in past tense, and you saw a couple flashbacks. But it looks like what they've done is they cut his voiceover in the past with this in the present day. This actually looks like it's happening during the finale, and they're coming for the Northern Water Tribe because there are a bunch of different Fire Nation ships instead of just Zuko's ship. Because when he came to the Southern Water Tribe to find Aang for the first time, it was just his ship with Iroh. So it kind of looks like they actually have a little bit of footage in here from the very end of the series, although most of the footage is from much earlier in the series. This actually looks like them a little bit later during the winter solstice when they're reaching the Scorched Forest. This is where they meet the spirit panda, Hei Bai, and Aang winds up meeting the spirit of Roku who tells him about going to the Crescent Island in the mission that he needs, like the special lesson that he needs at the Crescent Island. The Scorch here is from the Fire Nation's attack long ago that caused Hei Bai to attack a bunch of innocent villagers. He winds up capturing Saga, so it's a little bit of an adventure here. I don't know how much they're doing here from the original episodes. When Monkey Yasuo says the world might never recover, that's a reference to this episode with Hei Bai where Aang actually showed him an acorn and that the Force would eventually regrow, like things will eventually get better. This is meant to be the beginning of episode 1 with them actually showing the genocide of the Air Nomads. This might actually be Fire Lord Sozin attacking. Then they show Aang coming out of the ice in the first episode. We get a little bit of classic theme music from Avatar The Last Airbender. This does not look like a flashback. This looks like from present day in the Fire Nation court with Fire Lord Ozai and his men. This is meant to be one of the big changes from the original season one. So we didn't really see Azula that much till like the very end of season one and then mostly during season two when she becomes one of the big antagonists. What they said they've changed for the live action series is they made her a bigger character in season one just to flesh out her character arc a little bit more so that she doesn't just show up for like five seconds in a post credit scene in the last episode and then we don't really see her till like season two. 
So way, way more of Azula in Season 1 this time. Not totally clear where this attack from the Fire Nation is coming. It could be on Kyoshi Island. This is just a team-up attack from Zuko and Iroh. It seems like after they bailed on the Fire Nation, because one of the big turns during the season is that Zuko and Iroh become sort of like backup antagonists to Aang, and really it winds up being Commander Zhao that winds up being the actual main antagonist. This should look very familiar. It happened in the first couple of episodes of the original series. It's the ruins of the Southern Air Temple. This is where Aang goes into the Avatar state again because it gets so pissed off remembering what actually happened to the Air Nomads is basically him witnessing the aftermath of what he missed when he took off into the ocean and went down into the ice. Like, this is all the destruction that happened. All your friends died. All the people that you cared about because you ran off, theoretically in his mind. Like, he blames himself for all this happening. This is probably in the Southern Water Tribe before Zuko comes to attack, looking for him. This just seems like Katara talking to Sokka, trying to explain to him why he needed to help Aang on his mission to make it to the Crescent Islands. This actually looks like Kyoshi Island, though, because you see the statue of Kyoshi in the background there. We're actually supposed to get some sort of flashback to Kyoshi during Season 1. We get a little bit more of Appa. We even see Momo later in the trailer, too. So far, the special effects on them actually look pretty decent. A little bit more of him trying to impress everyone at Kyoshi Village. A little bit more comedy from Sokka. For a second, I almost thought that he was actually eating a cabbage, but we actually don't see Cabbage Man till he actually makes it to the Earth Kingdom. And do not worry, Cabbage Man does appear during the season. There was actually a brief scene in the last trailer of them entering Omashu. They actually see him for the first time when they enter the city here. This ship by itself just seems like it belongs to Zuko and Iroh. Probably during the first couple of episodes when they're down near the Southern Water Tribe and they wind up seeing Aang's signal as he comes out of the ice. We get a little footage of him talking to Iroh about his whole mission. It's basically like episode one where he's explaining who he is, what he's doing, why he cares about his honor so much. All of the memes that you remember from Zuko. I must capture the Avatar and reclaim my honor. Notice on his wall here in the ship, you see pictures of a bunch of airbenders in the background. These are previous airbenders. These are a bunch of air nomads. He's just trying to familiarize himself with what Aang might look like because they don't actually know. All the designs of his men look like they're right out of the series. A lot of people are going to be commenting on Zuko's scar. It's not quite as big as it is on the animated series. Like they toned the scar down just a little bit. A lot of people will remember Paul Sung Lee from The Mandalorian more recently. He was also on Kim's Convenience. But one of the funny coincidences on that show, people called him Appa. So we have Appa on a show with Appa. He also kind of looks like he was born to play Iroh. Not expecting any leaves from the vine or any like super cry-worthy moments from him during season one. Maybe a couple of cry-worthy moments, but like the real cry-worthy stuff doesn't really happen to like season two when they make it to the Earth Kingdom. We get a little bit of voiceover dialogue from Aang talking about stopping the Fire Nation. Not sure if he can actually do it. Then we see more of Ozai at the Fire Nation Palace. And it looks like this scene is actually going to be a flashback or they're actually going to show us him giving Zuko his scar. This is also one of those moments during the original Avatar The Last Airbender series that we only saw in flashback when characters were remembering, like Iroh was remembering these events happening. Like I said, one of the things they said they changed for the live action series is they show us some of these scenes in a much bigger way. This is actually Arden Cho playing June. She's riding on her Nylas from the original series. She's meant to be a bounty hunter in the original series coming from the Earth Kingdom, basically working for the Fire Nation, trying to capture the Avatar as well. This is meant to be Kyoshi Island still with the Fire Nation coming for the village, Suki in the background with the Kyoshi Warriors. Like I said, Commander Zhao meant to be the main antagonist of Season 1. We get a much bigger battle between the Kyoshi Warriors and the Fire Nation soldiers. Then we finally see Umashu, also happens pretty early during the original series. Then we see a bunch of Aang and Zuko teaming up when he becomes the Blue Spirit for the first time in the series. This is actually after Commander Zhao has captured him and Zuko basically has to free him because he doesn't want Commander Zhao to be the one to return him to Fire Lord Ozai because he can't reclaim his honor if he's not the one to actually return him. So he's actually trying to save him, not to help him, but so that he can actually claim his honor back. But it's just meant to be one of the early moments in the series where they actually do team up. Like Zuko doesn't really become part of Team Avatar until much later in the series. This seems like it's from much earlier in the series when Zuko comes for the Southern Water Tribe looking for him them inside the Earth Kingdom fighting the Fire Nation. Then we actually get our first footage of King Bumi during the Omashu episode. The much older version of King Bumi giving him a little taste of earthbending because at this point Aang hasn't learned how to earthbend yet. Toph is the person who actually teaches him how to earthbend. But the whole idea is that he doesn't really learn to earthbend until season two or book two, however you want to think about it. 
This looks like Katara waterbending inside the northern water tribe towards the end of the series because she also doesn't really learn to waterbend in a much more complete way until she gets lessons at the very end of season one. Just because of this top knot here, it actually looks like she's fighting Zuko here. This actually seems like Jet, a lot of people wondering if they do Jet on the series. This is more of them at the very beginning of the series with Zuko attacking Aang at the southern water tribe. A lot of footage from those first couple of episodes. Then we get Aang going into the Avatar state again. And just a reminder that all the episodes are dropping February 22nd binge style because we are talking about Netflix here. They haven't said when book two or season two is going to release. I think part of the idea is they want to get everything out as quickly as possible. Hopefully, hopefully they have a plan to get season two out by at least next year, but it could be two years because of the strike delays. That would actually mean that season two releases the same year that Mike and Brian's brand new Avatar The Last Airbender animated movie is also supposed to release. That's supposed to be with an older version of Team Aang. A lot of people wanted them to actually just adapt some of the comics for some of the animated Avatar The Last Airbender stuff, like just do forward in the timeline for Team Aang after the events of book three. Seems like you all got your wish. That's going to be the first animated movie. There'll be multiple animated movies, though. That's what Avatar Studios is all about. Like, they started their own studio. They're going to be making brand new Avatar animated series and movies. The brand new animated Avatar The Last Airbender series is actually going to be about the next Earthbender Avatar after Korra, though. That won't premiere, I think, until 2026, so it's a little further off. But there's a whole bunch of brand new footage here. This trailer looks way better than the last one. If there's any Easter eggs you spotted that I didn't talk about or any big questions you have about the series, just write them in the comments below and I'll just continue doing more videos as we get more footage for the series. We just got a brand new Invincible Season 2 Part 2 trailer. Click here for that and click here for all my other Avatar The Last Airbender trailers. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.